Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. So I'm sure you're all familiar with who Dave Ramsey is, but in the event you're not, he's a personal finance guy who yells at people for spending too much money, he hates debt, he can't stand credit cards, and uh, today we gotta talk about this video here. It's his most viewed video on the channel with 5.4 million views, and uh, it's a doozy. It's about a 29-year-old who has a million dollars in debt. And we're not talking good debt, okay? This isn't like, oh, a 29-year-old is a million dollars in low interest mortgages on rental properties and he's investing it like no this is this is serious this is uh, actually pretty bad so with that said you guys I want to share this video with you as soon as you hit the like button and subscribe because I promise this is about to get very interesting enjoy hi Channing welcome to the Dave Ramsey show hi Dave thank you for having me sure what's up so I uh, live in D.C. I just recently got married about three months ago. Congratulations. Yeah. So here's the thing. I think I need a headset like that. I would look so much more official. And I, and I don't know how Dave Ramsey always kind of sits like this half the time. Better than I deserve. Can't, I can't do it like him. No one does it like Dave Ramsey does. But you know what? I'll, I'll try. Together, we have probably just under a million dollars in debt. And we want to know how to get debt-free without filing bankruptcy. Ooh, man, my guess, probably student loans. I would be hoping that we have two doctors on our hands, right? That both have like $400,000 of student loans and medical debt, but they're about to make like $500,000 a year each. They can knock it out in three years, they're gonna be good. But you know what? The fact that she says uh, bankruptcy, like student loans are not dischargeable in bankruptcy. You can't just like go to Harvard, uh, write it out in student loans, live like a uh, like a baller, you know, buy all cool stuff and uh, go partying every night, get a great education to be like, well, I'm filing for bankruptcy. Uh, there we go. Now I'll start my career. It doesn't work like that. You, you can't do that. Um, so I'm curious exactly what type of debt they have. The mortgage, about 210. So you have $600,000 in what? 335 is about in student loans. We both have advanced degrees. And then a lot, the rest is really credit cards and personal loans. Yikes, here's the thing though. I, you, would, you would expect that they would have student loans and something that's applicable to, to make money. Not this like student loans and basket weaving or you know eclectic dance. PhD is like $400,000. It makes no sense sometimes what people spend money on. Because in my opinion, you gotta look at the risk versus the reward. What something's gonna cost versus what it's gonna make. Like what's the ROI of the degree? If you're going in getting a degree that's gonna cost $200,000, but the salary is 40 grand a year, doesn't work. It doesn't pencil out. That's a bad deal. But people take it because I don't know why. So hopefully it's something that they would make money with. We have about so 335,000 student loans and about 136,000 in credit cards, 44,000 personal loans, and 35,000 car loans. That's bankruptcy. Okay, so right off the bat, let's say you have $100,000 in credit card debt. The average credit card interest rate the average, okay, is about 22%. That means they're spending $22,000 a year, almost $2,000 a month, just in credit card interest. That doesn't account anything else. So if they have about uh, $800,000 and they're paying 20%, it, it's like they need to be like six-figure earners just to pay off the debt. Just to, just to keep their head above water from getting into more debt, they gotta make 100 grand a year. I have the majority of the student loans and he has the majority of the, of the credit cards. My, my credit card debt is about, it's not great. Okay, it's so about why, does he, why is he at 29 years old run up 100 grand in credit card debt? Well, he's, he's 32, but... Um, <laughs> oh, imagine Dave is like, oh, oh, oh he's 32? Oh, oh, okay, well that makes sense. Oh, never mind then. Oh yeah, the three years really makes a big difference. What are your degrees in? We do. So I have a degree, in both of our advanced degrees, no, he has an MBA and I have an advanced degree in policy. I work in the government and we actually both do now at this point. Actually. Oh, they work for the government. Jeez, I mean, listen, the government's known for underpaying people. Public services pay a fraction of what a private company would pay. The benefits could be good, okay? But it's like, you're taking a huge pay cut for you know that many benefits. It, just, it doesn't work. Why would they get a degree to do that? Makes no sense. So your household income is what? 
Our household income is about two thirty. Okay. So I told you they got to make at least a hundred thousand dollars a year just to pay off, just to pay off the bare minimum payments of the debt. Just the interest is is got to be exorbitant. Just the interest has got to be a hundred grand a year. So that means after tax or two thirty after tax or probably about one forty, one forty five, give or take, depending on which state they live in. That means a hundred thousand dollars of their income goes to debt. The other forty is what they live on. It makes on uh, a two hundred thousand dollars salary. You've been living at about. Um 10x where you're going to get to live for the next three years okay yep that's true so i'm getting ready to destroy your life as you know it three years isn't actually that bad i was thinking way longer than that because uh i mean at least they're making enough where they could make a dent in this it, it's still gonna take time but like three years goes by so quickly like you don't realize it like in the moment it's like oh yeah three years think back three years ago from right now like it, it feels sometimes like a year. So when you put it in that perspective, just things happen fast. You've been making 210, spending 310. I'm getting ready to put you on 30. Okay. You're not going to see the inside of a restaurant unless it's your extra job or you're waiting on some of the people you work with during the day. Okay. This is how humbling this is going to be. You know what's crazy though? I feel like restaurants are overrated. I know it's kind of crazy to say, okay, but like you realize as you get older how nice it is to not leave the house, just to stay home. It's it's nice to be able to be uh, away from everybody. It, it's something peaceful about that, making your own food, being self-sufficient, cooking what you want. You know what's in those ingredients. And now, you know, obviously going out to eat is fun, but uh, you know what? There's something nice, relaxing, just eating at home, getting to put on a good show. It's like think of it dinner in a movie. There you go. You had a great date night right there. The great news is you're very smart people. And if you will apply that intellect to solving this problem as if it were a policy problem or a business problem, you can solve the problem. But the lens by which the problem will be solved is through spiritual contentment. See, I'm curious why they would do the spending like this to begin with. Because uh, to, to, to knowingly spend that much more than what you make and knowingly just keep like maxing out credit cards. I, I guarantee they must have like four to five of them to get a limit of over $100,000. Like even on the high end, credit cards are given usually about 20 to 30K. High, high, high end uh, in terms of their limits, unless they're like American Express. In which case, you're, you usually don't carry a balance on those. But there's got to be some severe just disconnect between what they're spending money on or why they're doing that. I, I want to get to the root of that. Credit cards are actually bundled with one of those like debt relief programs where yeah. we, we put a pot of money with them and then they negotiate on your behalf. Yeah, you're going to probably have to pull out of those out of that. I don't know how quickly, but the problem with those people is they don't follow through and they administratively are, are really, really really pitiful. They're incompetent. Yeah, you know, I think one of those services, though, could be worth it. Now, now essentially, for, for those that aren't aware, what they do is they bundle all of your debt. And uh, sometimes what they'll do is negotiate with those companies to pay them off at a discount. So let's just say you have $100,000 of credit card debt. You'll go to a separate company and they say, okay, don't worry. Um, we'll take over these debts and then you just pay us 80 grand. And essentially what happens is that they'll be able to go to the credit card companies, or at least they'll try, negotiate that $100,000 debt down to 60 grand, and then you owe them 80. So they make a bit of money, um, the credit card companies get paid something back, and you save money in the process, at least in theory. Whether or not that happens in every case, I have no clue. But it's a good practice in theory if it works. We live with my parents now after we got married. Who's condo. living in your house? So I put my condo up for rent when I got engaged because I knew I wanted to save money for the wedding before we got married. So I had a renter in there the last year, actually looking for another renter. Her lease ends in a month. Oh, well, just sell it then. I thought you lived in it. No, we don't live in it. Oh, just sell it and put the 90000 on your debt snowball. Yeah, that's what I would do too. At this point, it's like the, the money that she's spending in interest is going to be so much higher than the income that she's able to generate from having a rental property. At that point, when your debts are like 20% plus, pay down the debt because th there's no other way that you're going to get an ROI as high as just paying down the debt. So overall, terrible situation. I wish that he would go into more of the, the nitty gritty of the psychology of like, what's going through your mind? Why are you doing this? Huh? What's the, what's the reason? What is this solving? How did you get to this point? That is what I think the real issue is. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. I thought this would be rather fun. Take a look at uh, Dave Ramsey's 
worst caller in the sense that, uh, hey, people watch this video, it's got a lot of views, and uh, I think these people, you know, you know what, you should do a follow-up, right? This, this is posted almost five years ago. Do a follow-up, see where these people are now. And hopefully, if they stuck with it, they would be debt free. And maybe also they get a free stock with their paid sponsor, public.com, down below in the description when you use the code GRAM because that could be worth all the way up to $1,000 when you make a deposit. Enjoy. Uh, let me know which free stock you get. Thank you so much. And until next time.